Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. Today is a very special day. Today is our video 100. And I want to thank GiddyUp994 and SMK for reminding us that this is a special video day for us. And so we're going to celebrate. It's a birthday. <laughs> and so today, for something special, we're actually going to do something that's actually a workshop project. Normally we do things that aren't, but today this is going to be a, a cupboard that we're going to make, a library cupboard for all of our woodworking books. And you can see, uh, and this isn't all of them, and of course it isn't any of my magazines. Now when we looked at what this cupboard would be, we decided that we needed something that needs to be very rigid. So in this case we're going to use box joints in all of the corners to make it very rigid. Normally or for a cupboard that hangs on the wall like this one, I would be using uh, rabbits to uh, rabbiting joints to put it together. But in this case we're going to use box joints because it makes it very, very rigid. The first step, of course, is cutting all of the boards to length. And we almost always want to cut off the end piece because in this case it's got a big nasty knot and it was split. Here we are at the table saw and I've already set up the box joint jig on the saw. I still have to make some settings on it to before we cut the, the box joints and I'm going to show you a close up of those. But basically if you've not seen this machine it cuts box joints and you just slide this back and forth on the saw. But let me show you the only two settings you need to set on this. So here we are at the table saw and I just need to set the height of the blade and I'm just using this scrap material because it's three quarters of an inch and I want the blade to be just slightly proud of the material that I'm going to be cutting because I want the pins to be a little bit higher than the material so that I can sand it down so that they're even and that looks good to me right there. Now the only other setting that you need to make on this jig is because these pieces and the front, these two front pieces right here, a little hard to distinguish them, but they're the side pieces and these two here, this is the top and the bottom of our cupboard. And they need to be offset by a quarter of an inch and I just used this plastic material and I have it marked here, it's exactly a quarter of an inch. So these two pieces back here are being offset by a quarter of an inch and the two front ones are going to be the leading ones going into the into the blade and that will make sure that the top and the bottom align properly that the fingers align properly and the only thing I need to do now is to tighten that up and we can start cutting our box joints Now all we have to do is take these boards out, flip them upside down, and we can actually do the other side. We don't want to change the alignment. And now, the two that will be offset will be in the front. And we just reverse our procedure and that's all there is to it. Now 
we just need to take these out and take them over the workbench and do a dry fit, see how they fit together. Okay, let's see how these line up here. There's the top and the bottom, there's the leading edge, there's the inside. And that should go just like that. That one should go like that. And that should go right on top. Always amazes me how uh, how well that jig uh, produces those uh, box joints. Now the next thing we need to do, because we're going to put a back in here, is we need to, and this is the front here. I'm going to mark the back, and we're going to need to cut a dado all the way around. And I've already selected a piece of plywood um, that I'm going to use for the back here. So we'll cut a dado in the top, the two sides. The bottom will actually cut it right off so that when we put the back in we'll be able to slide the back from the bottom. We'll actually be able to slide it in and then we'll be able to fasten it um, by nailing it at the bottom. So back to the table saw and let's set up for those for that dado. Setting up the dado for this is pretty simple. You just need to set the, the blade so that it's three quarters of an inch out from the fence and that will allow for the cleat to go in the back of the cupboard. The next thing we need to do is set the height of the blade. In this case I'm just going to go a quarter of an inch and I'm just using one of my little measuring bars and there's about a quarter of an inch right there. That's all we need for that. I've preset my wood in the order that I want to do it and remember the last one we're actually going to cut right through so we'll be raising the blade all the way up. So let's get started with the cut. Now one of the things that I found that works really well is uh, a little tube, this is like a little, well it's like a little pill bottle, this isn't what it is, but it looks like that, and a pill bottle would work, and you just simply dunk into that, and that will give you more than enough glue for each side, in fact you can usually do a couple of pins just by dunking, you gotta watch that you don't, it's gonna be messy anyway, but uh, try not to get too much glue anywhere else but on the pins. And that little paddle works really good. And in this case you want to go sparingly with the glue because you're going to be gluing both surfaces so uh, there is going to be some squeeze out in there. So, so I'm going to carry on and do that and uh, we'll come back when, uh, when we're completed. It's been a couple of hours now and the glue has dried and you can see how all of these pins how they're proud of the the carcass here so I'm just going to take a 
belt sander and I'll do most of this off camera but we're just going to sand these pins down. And you can see what a difference that makes. You can see how they're still a little bit proud down here. Um, and we just need to do a bit more work there. There. Just need to do all the other corners and uh, we'll be uh, ready to put the back on. Now we just finished sanding all the pins down. I just want to check to make sure the back will fit in all right. And that was those dados that we cut earlier. That's good. Now before I fasten the back on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into my sanding room and um, I'm going to sand the entire cabinet down because we're almost finished. The next job I'm going to do is to put a cleat on the back of the box and basically that's just going to fasten in there and we'll use some Craig pocket holes to fasten that and I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle at the back on that. I'll also cut a 45 degree angle on this one and this will actually be mounted to the wall which is why this is as wide as it is because this won't span the studs that I'm going to put on the wall. So when this gets on the wall the cabinet will just actually sit inside of the, the double 45 degree angle. So we'll cut that and we'll show you what we mean. So I just quickly cut a 45 degree angle and that's going to fasten on there like that and this will sit on the wall and you can see the 45 degree angle on there and so when the cabinet drops on that it just locks onto that you don't even have to screw it to the wall it just whoops, it just sits it will just sit on there so the next thing I'm going to do now is put some pocket holes in there and uh, fasten it to the cabinet and the cabinet will be ready to hang And now we just need to add the cleat. Well, I couldn't wait to try on some books. 
in the new cabinet. So I went out and got some of my library books to make sure they fit in there. There's, there's lots of room. I'm going to have lots of room for expansion and it's going to be a really nice sturdy cabinet to hold these books in. Now we decided that because this is a longer video and we are going to put doors on this cabinet but we're going to make a separate video for the doors and the reason for that is we're going to be using the European hinges so it's going to be a little bit longer than um, adding just adding a, a few more minutes to this video. So if you want to see that we'll post that uh, right after this one. In the meantime I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web thanks for watching don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and if you've got any comments, suggestions, or ideas, we love to hear them.